Okay, hi everybody. This is my last video, and I'm, I filmed a lot of them today, and they've kind of run the gamut on things to do. But um, I'm going to start off, this is going to be what I'm going to call my blast off or sound off, and I'm going to start off by answering some questions. Um, I would love if you guys asked me some more questions. That would be great. I love to talk about whatever. I'm not that private a person, although I, there are some things that are very personal and private to me, and I won't talk about But I'm going to start off this talk with the questions that I have, and these are from my Instagram account. And the first, per the first question is from Tori Grace, and I know that she's friends with Oriana, and she always asks Oriana great questions, and Ori loves her. And she asked me, what's my favorite thing to do on the weekend? Well, as a mom, and a, a kind of busy mom, I don't get a lot of free time on the weekend, but I think the things I like most to do on the weekend is anything that involves something fun and that I wouldn't normally do. Um, I don't get a lot of free time. But I love to read, and I know that's the most boring thing, but I love the beach. I spent my teenage years in Long Beach, and those were the most wonderful years, as well as it's just such a great place, and it's starting to rehabilitate itself from the storm in Sandy. So I love to go to the beach. Um, I like to visit restaurants. I like to travel. Um, I like to get my nails done. I love to go shopping. I had a really successful shopping trip this weekend with my mom and my daughter, and that was really fun. And um, just basic things like that, but I really would like to start traveling more. But again, it all depends on not only my schedule, but my husband's schedule and Oriana's schedule and hockey schedule. But thank you for that question, Tori Grayson. If you have another one, please feel free to ask me. Um, my next question is from Tabby Buns, and she says, where do you see yourself in the next five years? And I'm, I'm not <laughs> meaning to laugh at you, but that's pretty funny because I'm pretty old already. So in the next five years, I hope I'm living. That'd be the first thing. That would, that would be really a blessing. Um... I hope that my daughter is really, really happy and really successful in whatever that means, in whatever way she feels she'd be the most happy and most successful. Um, I hope that my mom is still well because my mom is now going on six years of being cancer free, so that would be wonderful. And, um, you know, I hope that maybe I won't be living in New York. Maybe I'll be living somewhere different. That'd be kind of cool. So I thank you for asking me that question because it made me feel like you don't think I'm as old as I am. And um, uh, this is from Glitter7310. She said, first of all, you and your daughter are my favorite people on YouTube. And I love, she says, y'all. <laughs> I love that. That's adorable. She said, my question is, do you do your own nails or do you take the polish you like and go to the nail salon and apply it? And um, I answered this in Oriana's question, in Oriana's video a little while ago. But in case you don't see that, you see this first. Um, I do 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 my own nails if one breaks or I get a nick on or something. I can do my own nails, but I do take it to a nail salon. And sometimes I bring my colors. Sometimes I use their colors. Sometimes I bring my decorations. Sometimes they, I use their decorations. Um, I do look for different ways to do my nails. I like to be creative. And I like to think I'm kind of the innovator of all this crazy nail stuff because I think Oriana mentioned it one time years and years ago when she was just a baby. I used to paint three of my nails one color and one a different color and one have a design in. So I've been doing this for a good 20 years now. So I, I pretty much think that that has a lot to do with it. And the next person didn't ask me a question. They're just Soul Surfer 2000 and they just wrote nails. So I guess they kind of had the same question. So hopefully, honey, I answered your question as well and I would be happy to answer um, any more. And I did have a question from a friend of mine that I knew when I was growing up and she is what I would like to refer to as my hippie friend. She still lives in the 60s, and um, her name is Fiona, and we call her Fee. And um, Fee has a lovely, lovely sister that is the total opposite of her. And she said, what's your best advice for bridging the gap between sisters when they get older? Because they were very close when they were young and very close as teenagers, and now they're older and they seem like they've kind of drifted apart. And I think this is very funny because I don't have sisters. So I don't know how she expects me to know that answer. But I'm usually the mom of the group and everybody used to come to me even when we were young. And I guess, Fee, what I would tell her and I would tell anybody that if you're trying to bridge the gap with anybody in your family, you can't force it. You kind of have to try to find something that you have a common interest in, a common love of, and work from there. You know, like if you like to go shopping, she likes to go shopping go shopping. If the two of you like the beach, go sit on the beach. Take a trip on a weekend to a beach you've never been to. That's the way, the best way to find a common grind, uh, ground with anyone and get back in touch with them and build a bond. So that would be my advice. Um, the rest of the stuff I'm going to talk about today, there's a couple of things because I told you I always wanted to do my YouTube as um, sort of like a talk show. And 
one of the things I do, and, and some of you have liked it. I don't know if you, none of you have not liked it. Nobody's said anything. But I like to do um, good in the zone and bad to the bone. So my, for this month, my good in the zone is thank you, California, for finally bringing back same-sex marriage. You had it for a little while in 2008. You voted not to have it, and you've brought it back. Um, as I've always taught my daughter, as I would like to teach anybody in the world, love is love. Love does not know age, gender, race, color, creed, size. You know, the only thing, hopefully, we know the difference is that, you know, you can't marry animals. Maybe in the future, who knows. And you know what? I kind of feel if that's what you want to do and it's, it's okay with anybody in your family, by all means, if you want to marry a giraffe, feel free. But thank you, California, for finally getting back into the groove. Where are you the rest of the United States? Love is love, and anybody that forms bond of love is such an amazing thing. If they get married, good for them. They're not hurting you. You're not hurting them. Just let them be. Let anybody be. It's their choice. It's your choice. Everybody should have the same rights and choices. And my bad to the bone is someone who has, from the moment I kind of started watching this television show, has just gone on to cross the line again and again. I am a big fan of Big Brother, and I'm sure a lot of you YouTubers out there are, a lot of you that will watch this video or maybe hear about this video. I am really so done with the current head of household, Erin Grease. And I believe her name is Grease. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. It's G-R-E-I-S. And I don't even know how her name is Erin because the way she spells it, it's Aaron. But, you know, that's her choice too. She has become this obnoxious, bigoted, racist little girl, and there's just no room and no tolerance for it in this world. She has offended Asian people. She has offended uh, African-American people. She's, affected, she's offended black people. She's offend, offended women. She's just this one little ball of hate. She has said things that I am, I am astounded that they let this go on in a network. Being the current state of what's been going on with Paula Dean and how she's been vilified and crucified, and, you know, I'm not going to get into my opinion of that or your opinion of that, whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent. You can't make an example of one person and then another and allow another person to run rampant. And this little girl on this show who's trying to be America's darling with her blue eyes and her blonde hair, all-American look, it's not washing with me. She's She's arrogant, she's obnoxious, she's offending people left and right, and they're just letting her do it. And um, if you feel as strongly as I do about it, write the network, call the network, let's just get her out of the house, because she's just filled with hate, and she's trying to pull off this beautiful little all-American look. It's not working for me, hon, you're done. So that's my bad to the bone and good in the zone. Um, another thing I want to address this week, which is, is something that's very, very important, it's summertime. Everyone has pets. You have to remember, you're hot, your pet is hot. I still see it in this day and age, people leaving their pets in the car. Don't take your pet out in the car if you're going to leave them there. The temperature in the car will cause brain damage. They can die. I see it all the time. If you have a pet and you leave it outdoors, in this weather, in this heat, you can't leave your pet outdoors. They will not survive. It's not healthy. It's not good. You can't do that. Please make sure your pets have fresh water. Please make sure your pets are spayed and neutered. Please make sure that you feed them properly and you take care of them. They are like human beings. They need much more love than even human beings do because they cannot fend for themselves. They can't say to you, hey, I'm thirsty. Can I have a glass of water? Keep those things in mind. So that's one of my pet peeves. I'm a, I'm a big animal lover. A lot of our animals were rescued. You know, if I could rescue more, if I had the room, I certainly would do that. But in the meantime, be a responsible pet owner. You want to be a responsible parent. You want to be a responsible adult. So be a responsible pet owner as well. That's one of my biggest pet peeves. So if you have anybody that you would like to make bad to the bone or good in the zone, let me know and maybe I'll feature them. Thank you.